Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is Retirement Rescue. My name is Dee Burks and I talk about all things to do with planning for, preparing for, and being retired. One of the things that I'm really trying to focus on this next year is talking about ways to earn money. Um, let's face it, the economy is doing its thing. There's nothing you can do about that. But what you can do are think of ways to earn money, think of skill sets you can add, think, think of ways of utilizing the things you love to do in order to make money. Now, many of you know I do lots of things. I restarted a business from scratch uh, less than a year ago. It's doing great. Yay, team. I came out of semi-retirement to do that, and I am enjoying it immensely. Um, I paint. I do art. I sell that. Um, <clears throat> I do just so many things. I write books, um, but I also, as a lot of you know, play poker. I love to play poker. I play the World Series events when I can. This year I got to play a couple, and we're going to talk about that. Um, in a little bit of a catch-up from this summer, I really didn't do a video at the time because I was kind of on hiatus from YouTube for a little bit while I was working so hard in my business. But I did get to go with a friend of mine, Francis. And Frances is a realtor here in town. We've known each other 40 years. Her uh, spouse does not play poker. And so it's fun when you can go with another poker player. There's, that is so fun. Uh, there's nothing worse than being in a casino with people who don't have the same interest. It's just, it's just awful. So, but anyway, it was not awful. Frances and I went together. Um, so I got to play a couple of events. This year I got to play some of the early events. Because usually, it usually starts around Memorial Day. And it goes like seven weeks almost, almost eight weeks actually, till mid to mid-ish July. And for whatever reason, most years, <laughs> I end up not being able to go until either part way or most of the way through June. Uh, that's just kind of the way it's worked out. It wasn't necessarily something that's planned. It's just kind of always seems to be the way it's worked out. And so that's when I've gone. But this year, I made a point to go early. Um, when you have a big event like this, and it's all poker, and it's all fun, there is so much energy and enthusiasm, especially early on in it. And some of the big tournaments, like um, the Mystery Millions, I wanted to play. I've never gotten to play that one at the World Series because they have it early. Or they have it at a time when I just couldn't go. And so I really wanted to play that one, which I did. I did not cash in that one. <laughs> I did cash in another one, though, which was great. So I bombed one, cashed one. I played some dailies. I did okay in those. I cashed some of those. So it's, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I would have loved to have a much better outcome. However, in the year, two years almost now, that I have been here since I moved back to Texas, Texas is now allowing card rooms. We can actually play poker legally, locally which is not something that has been the case in Texas for years and years. In most states, you can't play poker online. There's a few you can, but most states you still can't, which is crazy. Uh, and in a lot of states, they don't allow casinos or live poker rooms. Or if they have casinos, you have to go to the casino and they only have a few. Well, that's problematic if you want to play uh, and you're in a location where they don't have one. So I was super thrilled that they have a little card room here. Um, that had opened up right before I moved back, and it's now been a year and a half, almost two years it's been open, and I have thoroughly enjoyed playing there. It has also added to my income, and that's what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about how it has added to my income. Now, there are going to be some people who watch this video and are like, well, it's gambling. Okay, y'all need to stop watching this video. I don't care what you think. Get off my video, okay? I don't care. I enjoy playing poker. There are some people who love to play bingo, and they don't consider that gambling, but you know what it is. I don't care. Go do what you want to do. If you want to go crochet and make money off of that, you go do that. I like to play poker, and it's great that I can make money off of it. There are a lot of people who are heading into retirement, semi-retired, fully retired, that have hobbies have always had hobbies like playing poker. They get together with friends or they play at parties or whatever, but it's just a funsy thing. 
But as you get toward retirement, you start to realize, hey, not only is it a funsy thing, which you still love to do, but it's something you can actually make money at and add to your retirement income. And before you say, oh, she's just kind of telling us to go gamble and spend all our money playing poker, I'm like, get off my channel. You're stupid. Get off my channel. That is not what I'm saying. Don't be that way. Uh, uh, what I am saying is, if it's something you love to do and you want to improve your skill set, there are fabulous tools. YouTube is great for that. There are so many wonderful poker YouTube channels from men, women, retired people, not retired people, all ages from all over the world have done poker channels and they're really informative. You can learn so much whether you want to do tournament poker or if you want to play cash games because those are very different. You can, and I do both, but you can do either one and you can learn. You can sit at home and learn in the comfort of your own home and it not cost you a dime. Now, one of the cool things is a lot of these poker rooms, like the one I play at, which is Amarillo Social Club, they offer free games. Free! It really is free, y'all. You go down there, and you enter the game, and they'll usually have, like, something small, like a $1,000 uh, prize pool. In other words, they're putting up $1,000 to get you to come and play there. And sometimes, you know, they'll have like a dealer appreciation where you play $10 so the dealers get something. But it's optional. You don't have to pay it. You, it's completely free. So you go and you play for free. It is a great way to practice. It is a great way just to go and have fun with people and enjoy that camaraderie. You know, one of the things I talk a lot about uh, in regard to retirement is the need for social involvement. There are several poker players at this little card room that I go to well into their 90s. They play poker every day. It is their social interaction for the day. They play all day some days and they are amazingly sharp. Amazingly sharp. It keeps your mind active. It keeps you socially engaged. There's just a lot of pluses about it. And that's true of any kind of cards or games or whatever it is you play, if you go, to, go down to a local senior center and you play bunco or you shoot pool or whatever it is you do, it keeps your mind engaged. And poker is a great uh, way to do that. It's wonderfully engaging. You meet a lot of great people. It's just, it's just fun, you know? However, <clears throat> uh, to get more serious about it, you do need to educate yourself. You can't just walk into a poker room and expect to make money. Now, you can walk in and lose money, no problem. But you cannot just walk in and expect that you're going to take everybody's money. That's not how it works. You have, just like anything else, you have to educate yourself. Poker players are much more uh, up to date. They're more educated. They know the strategies. They know how to play. They know certain things about how not to play. And here again, you can learn that for free online. But you have got to take the initiative if you're going to do this. Now, one of the thing, one of the reasons I talk to people about, about playing poker is that it adds to your income. Uh, before I got my business off the ground, while I was just kind of trying to figure out what I was doing, it was paying for my house. You know, I would go down and play and I would make enough money to pay for my house, to buy groceries, to put gas in my truck. You know, and not have to use debt. I mean, it was a wonderful, substantial side gig. And one of the cool things is, you know, when you think about a side gig, especially as an older person, and when I say older, I mean over 40, y'all. Older. <laughs> but you don't necessarily want to stand on cement all day. Do you want to be a Walmart greeter and stand on your feet all day? No. For what? $9 an hour? $10 an hour? Give me a break. That's just crazy. When you can go and sit in a relaxed, beautiful environment where they bring you drinks and they bring you treats and they bring you everything you want, and you can make that $80 in one hand. I mean, really? So that, that is one of the reasons so many people love it. It's just, it is a great, easy way. You can go down and spend a couple of hours and pay for your groceries the next day. You can go down. Now, in order to do that, yes, you do have to have some sort of liquid money. You've got to have some money to start with. You've got to have enough knowledge not to lose that money. You can lose your money. Absolutely. You can lose your money. 
But that's also true in the stock market anymore. I mean, get real. And we're not talking about tons of money. I'm not talking about playing with your life savings. I'm talking about taking a little bit and building that fund up, because that's what I did, built the fund up first, and then you have plenty to play with. And here again, this is only for people who enjoy the game to begin with, who already are familiar with it, who know kind of what they're getting into. Uh, I would never tell someone to uh, gamble away their retirement. That's just silly. But if you have the knowledge and wherewithal to get in the game and enjoy it and have fun, it can be a great, wonderful, wonderful side gig. And one of the things that uh, I was talking on this podcast, I got invited after the World Series. Uh, I got invited to uh, have an interview on this poker podcast. It's, it's called Thinking Poker. And I'll put a link to it down below so y'all can see the, um, so, so y'all can hear it. Uh, my interview portion starts about 20 minutes in. I'll put the timestamp on the screen. So you can skip over it and you, and you can listen to it. And it talks about some family history with, you know, my mom's family uh, living in Vegas for a time. My grandparents working with Benny Binion and for Benny Binion at the Horseshoe. And so there's a little bit of history there too for those of you who are interested. But on this podcast, one of the things we were talking about was women in poker. And one of the things that I have been seeing more and more of, especially this last year or two, is women over the age of 50 seriously playing to make money in poker. They're not just playing to have a girl's night out. They're not just playing for funsies. They're playing to make money. And they are making money. <laughs> if you get on some of these poker groups, some of the women's poker groups where they're posting Women that are winning consistently at the Wynn, at the Venetian, at all these resorts. They are consistently winning. Those days of sitting down at the table with a few women and thinking you're going to take all their money are over. However, thankfully, there are still a lot of men who behave that way. If they sit down at a table with women, they just think we're stupid and we're going to give them our money. And we end up taking their money, which is great. They need to donate to my cause. It's a GoFundMe for me. Yes, it is. So anyway, <laughs> if y'all want to jump on that bandwagon, it is one of those things that I don't talk about a lot because you get that whole attitude of people who are very anti-gambling or whatever, and they have their reasons, fine, whatever. But um, I'm not, and I enjoy it. It is something that provides me additional income. It provides me additional joy. I mean, I love to play poker. And so it's one of those things that I really, really love. So why shouldn't I do it? Mm. Thank you to those of you who send me little messages that are like, hey, what about another video? Hello. <laughs> those are actually encouraging and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you all for watching. So I will see you next time.